Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And I'm John. Absolutely. We've got Mr. John Roser in the house. Johnny the Fish. You can find him on Twitter at John underscore Roser. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our social media, Facebook, Twitter. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. Leave some comments. Tell us what you're thinking. Uh, man, it has been a crazy year in college football so far. I think it's going to get a little, a little more weird. A little more weird. The show, as always... That's sweet music, man. Godly, that's so good. There's no way that's a white marching band. That is uh that Not is a the chance right there. That is the Florida State Seminole we, marching we, band. We really? We didn't even pick a good team. I would I would have guessed Florida A and M, but not Florida State. <laughs> no, that's okay. Florida State, cool. man. All right. Shout uh, out. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. Go find out what's going on down in the Delta. I'm telling you. It's a wonderful time down there. We enjoy it thoroughly. Ah, college football week six. I mean, we are getting on up there. And here's what I will say about this, because we have been saying this for every week that there's been like kind of a rough slate of games. We've been saying, well, that just means this is the week. It's all going to get turned upside down, and we're going to see the upsets. <laughs> and it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Maybe this is the week where we see some upsets. Hey, we'll, we'll just for, we'll keep saying it every for, week. It it's got to be true that, eventually. For a guy that likes betting dogs, it's it's been rough, man. <laughs> <laughs> just favorite after favorite after favorite. It's just big school after big school just keeps winning, and it's it, terrible. It's yeah, it's a, it's not great for well for us, and it hadn't been good for the numbers like the analytics. Like, the, the guys that we follow, Jeff Ma, who's going to be on the show on Friday, uh, Rufus Peabody, those guys, like, they've been going the same way that I've been going because I, I hear it after the fact. Obviously, they don't give out all of their picks, but they'll talk about just bad beats that they've had. I mean, I, I had one last week. Liberty, minus 7.5 at home against New Mexico and loses by a half point. Like, they they co- or they win by 7, but they missed a field goal. They made, like, it, it's... The numbers have not been working yet, but they will. I know they will. You it's, know what covered? I finally got off the, the dog train, and I bet the biggest, biggest bully in the house as a favorite. Ohio I felt, State. I felt sick in my stomach. That's, a, that's, that's this dude's team. I didn't like doing it. I love it. Ohio State. I didn't like doing it, and I just knew it was free money. Yeah, it, it just they, it, they, it, it makes I you feel dirty. I said this on the show. There wasn't a number big enough to make me play Nebraska. Yeah. I, I say Ohio State, they're not really like my favorite college football team, um, but they have been this year because it doesn't matter what I bet. It could be their team total. It could be the under on the other team that they're playing their team total. It could be the over in the first half. It could be the over for the game. It could be the first half point spread. It could be the whole game point spread. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I bet on with them this year. They have covered it every single time. Every single step of the way. Uh, Ryan Day. And you can get. Is Brought unreal. to you by Tunica, Mississippi. You can get Justin <laughs> Fields at ten to one for the Heisman right now. Really? Ten that's, to they've got him ten to one there. That seems, that is, that seems high. Two is like plus two fifty. Yeah, that's not that's not good. Joe Burrow's or no two is like plus one two is like plus one forty I think. Yeah, uh, he, Joe Burrow's like plus two hundred. Yeah, Burrow's way down there because like, of course you we get got Fields some... ten to one. That's that's was well, that's because you you're, you're talking about Southern quarterbacks. In the South, yeah, I yeah. bet our numbers are different than, than, than uh, New Jersey Georgia. and, and everywhere else. Yeah, probably been. I might be wrong on that. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Let's, what we got? Uh, uh, well, let's let's go ahead and move into the big one first. The big one, Memphis, Louisiana, Monroe. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> That's it. we we will not be discussing that one on this podcast. I wish Akron and UMass were playing again this week. Oh, we! I, I had that as uh, as one of the interesting games last week. Uh, I, I bet that one. Like you and I that's, talked about you it. Get UMass, that's, but that's UMass. why it was an interesting game. Yeah, it was interesting game because I do. When you have teams that are that crappy playing each other, that does make it kind of interesting. Yes. When we have a pick bad. segment where you could have given it out. I no, I did give it out. I know that means we had to talk about it twice. I know it was <laughs> worth it. It was absolutely infatuating. 
Uh, Auburn is going down to Gainesville. Auburn, a three-point favorite against the Florida Gators. The total is 47 and a half. It's the 2:30 CBS game in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Auburn 5 and 0 against the spread this season, 5 and 0 against the spread, 4 and 1 straight up in their last 5 against Florida, 6 3 and 1 against the spread as a road favorite in their last 10. Florida 4 and 2 in their last 6 as a home dog. That's straight up and against the spread. 3 and 7 against the spread in their last 10 as a dog overall. Backup quarterback against that Auburn defense. It it makes you think Auburn but that Florida defense ain't nothing to, uh, to to mess with. I mean, they are just. It, Todd Grantham is a beast. Okay. An absolute beast. Don't disagree with that at all. All, right, tell, tell all me, of Florida's talent is on the defensive side of the ball, just like Auburn. But yeah. That I just I completely agree with that. I I can't understand why the over under is at forty eight. Yeah, it seems really high. To me. I I think that's. And this probably means that my assumption is off, wrong. I mean, I, I think that's six, seven points off. I mean, it should be low 40s. You would think so. Usually, when I'm that far off, something's wrong. I'm wondering about, like, defensive, because remember, defensive touchdowns score the same as, as offensive touchdowns. I'm wondering if, like, Al- special Auburn's, teams. Auburn's defense is great. Florida's defense is great. They're not scoring points great. They're just getting, like, extra possessions for their team. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's because both of these defenses are great at the front seven. Those guys don't return touchdowns. It's not like a lot of pick sixes. They just cause fumbles, three and outs, things like that. This this game seems like they are wanting you to bet Auburn. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know that. I, I, I see this game differently. I think this line is exactly where it's supposed to be. I don't think they're trying to get you to do anything one way or the other. Do you think Florida is better without Felipe Franks? Yes. Market, okay. Marketably better. I, I think they take less risk. I completely agree. I think Dan is going to be more conservative than he's ever been. And I think that this team is more talented than what he's used to, so the conservative thing actually works. Completely agree with that. When they are... Yeah, I, okay, okay. Uh, Roser, how do you feel about this? I, mean, it's, uh, I am totally staying away from this game. Um... <laughs> Because I I don't know I I mean look I I, I, say, I think the line is so low that it's begging you to take Auburn with how well Auburn has been playing and let's be honest Florida has flirted with disaster a couple of times this year uh, whether that was against Miami whether that was against Kentucky and they needed the crazy comeback when Trask came in uh, to even win the game. Um, it, 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 everything about Auburn has been impressive. The comeback yeah. against Oregon, just the, the utter. Here, but here's the thing: we got to look at. We were so impressed by their dominant. I mean, look, they won 28-20 over A and M, but that was a dominant performance against yeah. Texas A and M. Those are garbage time stats from Kellen Mond and to and try Jimbo to make it a game at the very end. Right, yeah. right. That was a dominant Auburn performance. But now we look up after this past week and what we saw Texas A and M against uh, Arkansas against Arkansas and what we saw Clemson against North Carolina and it's like because we thought A&M well look man they only they held Clemson to 24 points that's really good and then it's like well North Carolina we held look, them to 21 so. right and <laughs> yeah and now we, and then because now we're like oh, Clemson just they're playing really well and so now we look up after A&M almost had, loses to Arkansas and we're like well maybe just Texas A&M isn't very good um to me, the line screamed begging you to take Auburn which would have me if I had to take it I'd probably take Florida just because that seems to be what it's screaming for you to do is to take Auburn with how well they've been playing. But, yeah, I mean. It's I, tough to go against Auburn right now when, it they're, is, when and, they're sitting and, at 5 and And out. I love Dan Mullen, and I do not like betting against Dan Mullen. What, uh, let's do picks. Who are you taking? I'm going to take Auburn. I'm going to roll the same way. I'm going I'm to fall straight into the trap. Auburn has looked absolutely fantastic this week. Uh, not this week, this year. All five weeks. Uh, you roll in Florida? Give me the Gators on the money line. <laughs> Give me the Gators. Florida straight up. I gotta be. I just be different. Hey, you know what? With uh, with these kind of segments, but, 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 the, but, the way we've been going, that's probably a. Really but good much how much thing. how we talked about in the NFL portion about that Browns 49ers game. I think you're looking at a similar thing here. That Florida offensive line, they got the work cut out for them against that defense, that front seven of all. I, I think this is the worst trash looks. We're gonna see why. Why Trask? Why is the Dan didn't trust him to come in that game? 
I have no idea what happened with Kentucky other than they just weren't prepared for a guy like him. Yeah. Not that he plays so different than Felipe. Uh, I think Dan maybe just dumbed down the offense to a point where let playmakers make plays. It's just going to be hard. It's tough to do that against this Auburn And defense. Auburn Auburn has speed like nobody's yeah. business. Florida's and fast, and Florida is athletic on defense. They're crazy good, crazy talented. Auburn has speed that nobody can keep up with. Dude, they've got a guy who's on the United States track team yes. on their team. Like yes. that's like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, when we say world class speed, <laughs> that like that's not hyperbole <laughs> anymore. That is world class. You have a guy on the absolute. United States track team. Yeah. All right, let's. Is that uh, good? Is that hard to make? Yeah. That's, that's, I, I would think that'd be. It's okay. kind of tough. That's a Sounds little bit faster than uh, than you and I. I mean, I'd just say if he's a sprinter. I mean, I just NCAA <laughs> might want to test him. I just saying, just saying. <laughs> hey, hey, Game hey. number two. We're going to the big house. Iowa at Michigan. Michigan, a three and a half point favorite. Total high again, maybe forty seven here. Eleven a.m. on Fox. It's another one of those big noon kickoff or whatever it is in Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Iowa five and one straight up in their last six against Michigan. Six and two straight up in their last eight road games. Michigan, one and seven against the spread in their last eight games. And that's after they covered last week against Rutgers. Uh, they are one and four against the spread in their last five at home. It. I am so confused on what way to go with this. Did Michigan get it figured out against Rutgers? Or... Is it just Rutgers? It's Rutgers. Uh, but Mich- it, it, look, y- you will never find me betting on Shea Patterson ever again. Uh, he sucks. I've, he been, is, I've been saying it forever. If they don't make a change at quarterback, they can't. Dude, he great. is. He is. Y'all, are either one of y'all watch wrestling? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. S-A-W-F-T yeah. soft. That is Shea Patterson. You get anybody <laughs> near his face, and that dude Throw, he's going to airmail it, oh, he's yeah. going to throw a pick, or he's just going to throw a horrible garbage pass. That dude can't take it. He is soft. He cannot take pressure. Kirk Ferris, you know he's going to have a physical defense. Oh, uh, yeah. It's always a physical team, and you know they're going to try to get after Michigan. Um, they're going to try to get after Shea Patterson. You get after Shea Patterson, you can – I mean, he will get rattled, and you can beat Michigan. I'm just curious to see what is Iowa really? Because they, they haven't been tested. The game against Iowa State was weird such game. a weird game. You throw it completely. Yeah. A, it's a rivalry game. You throw it completely out. But the fact that it took like 14 hours to play. Yeah. And yeah. All this, like, like, I take zero from that game. Yeah. So other than that, they, I don't know anything about this Iowa team. That's, that's kind they of where I'm been sitting. Tested. And there is a part of me that feels like if Mich- before the season, we thought Michigan had a chance to go 12-0 and and be unbeaten. I'm with you. I don't believe in Shea Patterson, but I didn't then, and I actually thought there was a chance that he was going to lose his job by now. Um, hey, hey, you remember the other day when we were doing the recap? Okay. We were talking about Wake Forest. I was talking about Dave Clawson. Yes, sir. For big time jobs. Okay. What about going up to Ann Arbor? Well, I first think the I job think wins be- this game. First, the job has to become available. I think Iowa wins this game. I think Harwell goes back to the NFL after this season because this will be the first of many losses this year. This is a, you remember in the previous. Well, it won't be the first yeah. of many. Well, this will be the second of many. The, the first home loss. Well, first home loss of okay. many. Okay. Um, early in the preview, when we were doing it back in July and August, and I said the last time that Harbaugh went 10 wins and had a really good season. The next year they went seven and five. Is this a seven and five kind of team, or is this a win the Big Ten kind of team? I this is it. I this mean, screams seven and five. I mean, he look, he lost, he lost two absolute studs on that defense with Devin Bush and um, and Winovich. Uh, and R- R- Rashawn Gary too. Oh yeah. Like, you know I mean? Well, but two, Gary he, was out for yeah. It, it, he, mean, he still lost two first round picks. Lost two yeah. first round picks off that defense. Um, look, they still have players. To me. It comes down to that quarterback spot, and that kid is soft. Patterson yeah. is just soft. That guy is not a leader. And, well, and they don't I, have a running back to lean on. No. Because it, it, nobody, there's nobody on this team that really stands well, out. And here's the other thing, too. So they brought in with Josh Gaddis from Alabama to be the yeah. offensive coordinator. Who, who it's like we're going to 
disaster. We're going to spread the field. No, Dude, they run the exact same style of offense they've always run. They just do it from the shotgun now. They freaking run the ball on first and second down every time. <laughs> they just hand the ball off first and second down and get three yards every time. They set up a third and four, whatever it is. I'd love to see it, Warren Sharp's analytics on this football team. Oh, he hate, he. Oh, there's no doubt he would hate Michigan. And, oh. and here's the thing. I love Harbaugh. Like, I love the dude. I oh, mean, yeah. he's such a bro. What he did with the 49ers, I mean, the fact that we have been so bad for so long and then three straight years, we go NFC Championship game, go to the Super Bowl, go to an NFC Championship game. So I love the guy. For, I love the guy for that. Took, like, almost the exact same football team, 3-13, and 13, took him 13-3 and three to the NFC title game. Like, yeah. You know, I, and then what he did in the second he was two, gone. Back down, back down in the gutter the second he was gone. So, I mean, look. I, and, he, and he built up Stanford, which yeah. is not an easy task. No. And well, and before that, he built up the University of San Diego. Like the guy yeah. has coached. I I think both of those places are easier to get top tier talent for their quality of school than because you West Coast a lot of talent there. I just think it's really hard to recruit. If you're not Ohio State, you're not getting the talent that you need yeah, but in he's, the Big Ten. Penn State's got, got players. Yeah. Penn State, Franklin's got players there. You look at his recruiting rankings, and you look at look at Harbaugh's like. He's had, like, multiple top ten recruiting classes at Michigan. I've I've said this. He doesn't have a trigger man. He doesn't have a quarterback. And until you get that, listen, I've been an LSU fan for a long time. Yeah. I've, I've, I've never had life with a quarterback before until this year. I don't know what this is like. And you had to get that one from Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, from Ohio State. Thanks. Um. I just, it's just one of those things where if you don't have that position right, you can't play in this league. Now, and we're right. finding other teams are two and three deep at quarterback. Yeah. I, are, are both of y'all taking Iowa? I don't know. Oh. oh, give me Iowa. Give me the money line. That's, uh, I think a Florida-Iowa money line parlay. That could. I, I'll take that action. If you had, if you had like a ton of, <laughs> if you had like a ton of the big favorites, but then action. you put in Florida and Iowa on it, yeah, you could get you could get some change on that. Hang on, let me just tell you what that Florida-Iowa money line. Would be on its own without the big. With guys. just like a ten dollar bet. Well, just just those two without the other things. Okay, without anything else, ten dollar bet. I'd pay you forty seven and a half dollars back. You want me to hold that ten? You got a couple of Lincolns. <laughs> I'll hold it for you. Call call me later. Oh. I'll take that. Let's move into game number three. Yeah. I'm. Let's, you know what? I got to make a pick. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to take Michigan because I just I don't see this team losing five games. I don't see them losing four or five games. They're and you know the that there's going to be other losses. I know there's I know this team is not going eleven and one. I know that, predominantly a fact that's going to happen. Well, would you, yeah, would you they, take, they got, they've still got to play Michigan State and Ohio State and Penn State and Penn State and Penn State. And we know yeah. what happens when Michigan plays Ohio State. I know. We've kind of seen that. Yeah, we've seen that one before. The Penn State thing. I mean, that team appears to be rolling. We'll see I, what happens. I know. I was a doubter on Penn State this season. It's, well, I mean, they gave you reason early in the year, but, God, that Maryland showing was just ridiculous. All right, let's move in. Michigan State at Ohio State. We'll stay in the Big Ten. We're moving to Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio State, a 20-point favorite over the Spartans. The total is 49. This is your 630 ABC game. Yeah. So, basically, every noon game on Fox and every 630 ABC game is either Michigan or Ohio State every yeah. week. So they're just they're they're bookending them with your Big Ten stuff, and it makes sense. No, we, we, got, we got in Texas, we got Texas LSU, we had Texas Oklahoma State. Texas Tex, was okay. a good game. Okay. At least the other game was a good game. We keep getting Ohio State in these twenty point spreads. Now well, let's that's not their fault. They're that awesome. At Michigan yeah, but State. That, there's a lot of other games you, you Chris, can put on. You TV. you can go ahead and say you're taking Michigan State. That's too many points. I'm not you, saying you're... I'm taking Michigan State. I'm saying I don't want to watch this football game. No, I don't want to watch somebody beat up on a on a helpless kid. <laughs> Ohio State's <laughs> killing people, and that's great. That's not a knock on their program at all. Throw in the damn towel. Put something. <laughs> put something else on my TV, please. Well, you know you're going to take those points. That's too many points. You're not passing that. Just for someone who loves dogs, man, 20 points is way too many points. You, well, you are, that's you, not you, way too many points. Last week, if you'd have given me 30 points, I made it clear. I would I would have laid 30 points. With Ohio State. With Ohio yeah. State. I would have laid them all. Our 6.30 games, now, or 7 o'clock. 
Antonio, you, a little different. You've got Georgia at Tennessee at 6 p.m. on oh, ESPN. God, that's a garbage game. You got Tulsa at SMU on ESPN. You at 6:30. I'm not watching that game. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Tulsa SMU could be a good game. Tulsa's not a bad team. SMU I like looks SMU awesome. really good. I don't like. I'm not watching that football. Game. Vandy at Ole Miss on the SEC Network sweet. at 6:30. Hey, hey, they're honoring the oh, the the God. great San Francisco 49er legend Patrick Willis at that game. There you go. Cal at Oregon is I at seven. Patrick. Pitt at Duke. Wait, there's Duke and who? Pitt? Pitt and Duke? Yeah, Pitt and Duke. Yep. Um, Oregon State at UCLA is I might, eight, I, might take, I might take the wife out. It's probably not a bad idea. Because it's a garbage got, slate of games. That's, that's what I was telling you. No, that's it's the, not for the whole week. It's just this time slot right here. Yeah, the Prime your night time, game. We well, got a bunch I'll, of big name teams here we go. playing some sorry ass teams. Washington at Stanford. No, here's here's the problem in college football right now. You've got a handful of good teams. And then everybody else doesn't know how to play anymore. You know what's like going to be a really good game that should be on somebody's TV? We're going to get to it later. Army Tulane. That's a good game. That's an 11 a.m. game. But that, I know that. That's what. Well, so you're going to have to have two TVs to watch that and Iowa, Michigan. But this so. is the problem. We've got good games on the slate. They're just not at prime time because those aren't big name teams. And people think that, well, if I don't put Michigan State or Ohio State or, or Michigan, on television, then we won't get ratings. But but I disagree. I just disagree with that. You're right. Casual Joe Blow might not turn it on because he's looking at Ohio State and nothing else. But once he sees it's a three, four score game, he's turning it off. If you give me a good game, I'm here for the duration. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand your pain and I appreciate your passion. I don't know what to do. It's fantastic. I feel like this is pandering. That's okay. <laughs> so, Michigan State, Ohio State. Let's get back into it. <laughs> Michigan State, 4-2 and two in their last six as an underdog to Ohio State. Uh, that's against the spread, of course. They have been blown out the last two years. They have only been an underdog of 20 points four times since 1998. They are 4-0 they are and against the spread? 3-1 and one against three the spread. And one. Right. Uh, two of those covers are... The, the one that they lost was against Penn State. Um, but they are... Like they keep this game close against Ohio State when the spread is that much. 28 to 24 win in 1998, 17 and or 17 to 16 loss in 2016. Uh, whenever they expect Michigan State to be complete crap, they tend to pop up and do something. Now, the 28 to 24 win in 1998, that was Nick Saban. The 17 to 16 loss in 2016, you remember that was that three and nine Michigan State team, just awful. Is D'Antonio like on? You think he's on the way out here? I don't I know mean, if he's on the way. I out. think they've still got a fantastic defense, and this will be the first time that Justin Fields yes. has been I'll, really okay. tested. So that's what I was actually going to get to: is name a defense that Ohio State has played yet. So, well, everybody thought Cincinnati had a pretty good defense. Nah, and they <laughs> tore them apart. <laughs> I mean, but the, but, the fact, right. you know, but the fact that but the fact that you acknowledge Cincinnati as probably being the best team that they've played so far, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah it's a problem. I, I will absolutely take all of these points. I will take all these points. I will take D'Antonio to have some pride, and then I will assume that this team has not played any adversity at all. They faced nothing hard whatsoever. Hey, hey, hey. They were down five to nothing to Miami, Ohio, okay? <laughs> They were down five to nothing to That's Miami, adversity. and then reeled off seventy six points on the <laughs> Man, why do they got to do Miami, Ohio like that? Seventy six to five. That's man That's just wrong. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. I I do like Michigan State here. Um, I I took them. I put a small amount on them on Monday at twenty one. So when it had jumped that to 21. Seat, I wish it was at 21, and I honestly, I'd probably be with you on taking Michigan State. Um, that being said. But 20, it's like right there on the line, and I could totally see Ohio State. My, my, my only concern is, like, dude, I don't – Ohio State's defense is good. They, they are good. And Michigan State's and Michigan, defense is good. And Michigan State, I don't know if but, Michigan State can great. score on Ohio State. I don't know if they can score on them. My problem is Michigan State's defense gave up 31 to Indiana last week. Yeah. So, and while I, you know, you go back and you watch that game and there's just... That is a look-ahead spot, though. If they're looking forward to yeah. Ohio State, it is a look-ahead spot. It, it does make you question things. So, I'll, I'll take, Ohio State, I'll take the points. 
Yeah, Ohio State minus ten and a half in the first half. You got to roll with. <laughs> you have to roll with that. You got to. They've covered the first half line every week. You have to continue to take it until it doesn't cover. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. It's the same I'm way with, with Florida State. They so cover every first half line. First, they half. just suck in the second half. What's it, wait, what's that first half line? Ohio State ten and a half. Ten and a half. Well, they really like putting that hook on there, don't they? Yeah, last last week, Nebraska was nine and a half. I was like, oh god, give me that. This is printing money. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all this is. That was. I mean, they beat up on a they beat I'll, up on a lesser, weaker kid. I was at a wedding and, I, and, and Vernon was there. We're both we're both at the wedding and he's uh we're sitting there during the reception and I'm like, look at my phone because he was telling me he's like, man, it's Saturday night in Nebraska. He's like, man, it's gonna be what? And I run up to him, I go, Ohio State covers the first half line every single week, and he goes, what's the score? And I go, thirty eight to nothing, and he goes, holy crap! <laughs> like, yeah, it was it was utterly ridiculous. Uh, let's move into game number four, because obviously the way that we do this, we always say we're going to go quick. We never do, because football is fun, damn it. Friday night, Central Florida, four-point favorite at the Nip, man. Yeah, Nippert you- Stadium, they are not going to have the black field. I was really no, disappointed. You can't do that, because Cincinnati would wear all black uniforms, too. Like, you, yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't do that. You can't see them. Boys, he wears blue on the blue turf. The blue turf is a lighter shade of blue than oh. the jersey is. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the same. It's the exact same. It, it's, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, they shouldn't be allowed to do that either. Well, but they are, yeah. and, and I think Cincy should absolutely do this. No, they're I, not going to. Um, but it is in Nippert Stadium. Cincy, Ohio, 7 p.m. ESPN, Friday night. The total is 60. Again, UCF is a four-point favorite. UCF, 6-2 and two against the spread, their last eight on the road. Cincy, 5-2 and two against the spread, their last seven at home. But only 1-6 and six against the spread in their last seven as a home dog. UCF, 3-0 and oh straight up and against the spread the last three years against Cincinnati. Here are the margins of victory for the last three years for Cincinnati, or for uh, UCF against Cincinnati. Okay. 25, 28, 21. And this line is four. Oh, no, this is printing money. Dude, UCF is going to kick the living crap out of them. I really... Did people take it? You're overthinking this if you're taking Cincinnati. You are no, overthinking no. this. I really cannot figure out a reason to take Cincinnati here. I mean, they're going means... to be fired up. Which means that Cincinnati is going to cover because that is the way that my year has gone. Oh, but this makes all the sense in the world to have UCF, right? Am I missing something? This game's in my game of pick. Oh, well, then I ain't even going to talk to you about it. You, yeah, you, you look excited about this. This game's in my game of pick. Okay, okay. I ain't even going to ask you for a pick yet. You can give it to me later. That'll be fine. Of course, you can always go over to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Check out the gambling picks segment. You will see all of our gambling picks and our big game picks against the spread and straight up for the week. Let's move into game number five, since uh, since we are not going to discuss too much about UCF, but that is going to be a raucous atmosphere, yes. I think, in Nippert Stadium. Game number five, Tulane minus three on the road in West Point at Army. 45 and a half is the total. It's an 11 a.m. game on CBS Sports Network. I think this has potential to be the best game of the weekend. These are two... I asked you to put this in as one of the big games. Yeah. Well, because, because I it, think I think this has potential to be the best game of the weekend. Oh, Willie Fritz against Monken. Yeah. I, I, I think these are two offensive geniuses that are that, trending that in are the That are just playing yeah. incredibly well. Yeah. Army 12 and 1 straight up in their last 13 games. Tulane 4 and 2 against the spread in their last 6 as a road favorite. Army 7 and 3 against the spread in their last 10 as a dog. How much of an impact is Willie Fritz's triple option knowledge going to have? Similar matchup, they are two and two against the spread against Navy, one and three straight up while he's been at Tulane. I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but they are familiar with it. Oh no, the, yeah, this Did is not going to catch anybody off. Tulane played what last Thursday? Uh, both teams. Or they had a bye. Both no, teams have had both, a bye. That 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 helps Tulane if anything is having the bye, giving yeah. you the extra week to prepare for it. I mean that. But they that, both that run the triple you. option. They both know. Well, the, so so Tulane doesn't two, doesn't run it now. That, I was like, they're more explosive. They have a much better passing game, but they still run a little option. They know this. Nobody's getting caught off guard. I'm crazy excited about this. I, I'll be. 
I'll be on the green wave. Really? I'm on the green wave. I am super surprised by that. And I'm crazy excited to watch this football game. And man, I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Knights. I'd take Army too. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I like Army as a dog at home. 11 a.m. It's gonna be hot. It's West gonna be... Point's West Point's intimidating. Yeah, that's the military you're talking about. And, and Tulane does I, not go up there all the time. And, no, and, no. And while Tulane has played against Navy, they are one and three straight up against them. And Navy has not been as good as Army is. Tulane right hasn't been close to as good as they are this year in the True. past. So all of their trend from from years in the past don't matter at all because the talent on this Tulane team and the way they're playing right now. Just immeasurable, the difference between prior years and this year. You might be right. So, I'm, I'm, I'll be taking the green wave. I also have, like, I'm not going to say that. No, I'll get I get crushed enough on this thing. No, no, let it roll. I, I don't think I would play Army non-conference ever. Oh, absolutely And not. it's not because I'm afraid of losing. Those chop blocks. Oh, it's you, you're, you're gonna just have somebody asking for your entire defensive line to, to, to lose knees, and it's they, not playing dirty. I like yeah, it's, we're gonna dis, we're gonna disagree. I, I think that's their only way to win. I get it; they're at a massive disadvantage. I, but I it's it's absolute it's absolutely a dirty block because it takes people out. It doesn't block somebody; it takes them out of the game for the rest of the year. It blows kneecaps. It just does. I watched them against Michigan. And all I kept thinking was had nothing to do about the game, had nothing to do with the spread. Just why the hell is Michigan playing this game? I literally would throw every third string, fourth string walk on guy out there to play defensive line and just say, you know what, we're going to lose this game. But I don't care. I can't have scholarship athletes getting knees blown out. I'm just not yeah. going to do it. I'm just not. I'm sorry. That is a different I'm way to look sorry. at this. It's, it's definitely. It's it, there's no way to practice for it. There's no way to prepare for it because then you're taking your own guys' knees out in practice. It's just there's no way I would play them. I just wouldn't do it. And that that's going for not just Army but any triple option team, right? Yes. Yeah. But Army and Navy are different than like who was it that used to play like South Georgia or, or Georgia Southern somebody Georgia like that. Southern. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like them, I would be more opt to play. They're not as disciplined. They, they're bigger, so those those guys diving at your knees, that's still a 350-pound guy diving at your knee. He's not athletic. You've you've got you've got Army and Navy dudes that are crazy athletic and yeah. in hella shape. I mean Citadel that, is is the same way. Yes, but that's yeah. but like I said, that's different. Georgia Southern, those offensive linemen blocking for that. Georgia Tech, when they used to do it, blocking for that. Those are normal athletic offensive linemen. They're they're not diving at knees. Okay, that because they can actually stand up and block you man to man. Okay, okay. I, in no way I'd ever schedule this team. <laughs> I'm excited to watch it. I know that it's going to be 80 times in this game. I'm going to be like, oh god, oh god, that guy's knees about to blow, <laughs> and it's going to piss me off. Super <laughs> pat- unpatriotic. I know it's bad take. I get it. I, I know. I know. Bad. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Let's go through the rapid fire. Uh, interesting segment. Cal at Oregon. Cal is going to be without quarterback Chase Garbers. There was a massive yards per play difference when he went out. Cal's offense, without him, looks like what I thought it was going to be before the season started, where I took them under five and a half wins and thought I was golden because I thought they were only going to win four games all year. They're sitting at four and one. They don't get Garbers back. I got a chance here. No, they'll win a game. Oh, the Pac-12 well, I don't is not know. That, good. that offense is putrid. That defense is elite. Oregon, however, it's a pretty elite football team. No, we like. Oregon. I don't. I don't think Cal gets the win this week. Uh, yeah, the question yeah, is, yeah, I don't. Yeah, do you, Cal ain't beating Oregon. Do you think Oregon scores enough to cover eighteen? Though I was just about to say that's that line's tough, a, man. That's a big number. Yeah, but if 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 Cal can't move the ball, that defense gets worn down eventually. That's right. I agree with that. Second half could be. Against the teams that they're just, there's just a marketable difference in talent. They're going to struggle. Yeah. But there's a lot of Pac-12 teams that they're not going to be a marketable difference in talent, and that offense is going to be just fine. Yeah, I yeah. think one of the things to look at with this game would probably be if if you're going to bet it, maybe uh, watch the first. If you if you're somewhere where you can do second half bets, watch the first half, and Cal probably keep it close there in the first half. Defense plays really hard, keeps it close in the first half. And then the second half, you may be able to get Oregon like minus 10 in the second half, and that's when they could just wear them down. That's right. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Next game, TCU at Iowa State. This is a game of coaches that you love. It Matt is. Campbell, Gary Patterson. Uh, look, Iowa State, two losses already. A young season. TCU already got a loss. Uh, but TCU did look good against Kansas uh, last uh, week. I felt sick betting against them, and I just felt like I deserved that. Iowa State has deserved every bit of that. two losses to Baylor and Iowa by a combined three points. Yeah. That is really difficult. Do you think they just take it all out on TCU? Because these two play very similarly. Like, they are, they are not your average Big 12 team. Which way do you lean here? Oh, I'd take TCU. I'm taking whoever gets the head start. I'm getting plus three points. I'm taking three points. I'm taking the head start. Okay. But that's about it. That's it. It's just. I mean, that's it. I think they're even. I, I think they're evenly matched. I think this is an even game, and I think home field advantage is probably worth three points. I think I'd probably roll Iowa State. I think Iowa State's going to come out and destroy. Here's the, here's the thing that's scary about this is Iowa State has the defense to create fumbles. We know TCU has a problem holding on to the football. There you go. If TCU turns the ball over four or five times, like when they start turning it over, it when it rains, it pours, it just goes. Kansas didn't have the dudes to knock the ball out. They just yeah. didn't. Um, so TCU rolls them. Uh, but Iowa State could absolutely roll. Oh TCU. no! Iowa State could absolutely take the ball away a couple of times and it just create chaos. But I'll, I'll, I'll still take. So, it. I don't I'm like betting, betting against. I don't like betting against Gary Patterson. I'm not betting against Gary Patterson anymore. I did it last week just because I, less I, different. I'm, I'm not doing it. Ever. I mean, I'll probably stay away. I mean, I see what Iowa State minus three is even. Yeah. Even yeah. money on Iowa State right now, which would tell me that TCU is. I mean, that's the one that actually costs the money to make the bet that TCU is the – yeah. that would be the play. Yeah, you might be I, right. I, I don't want to bet against Gary Patterson. I, I, I mean, personally, I'd stay away from the game. I, I mean, it will not be in my picks. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to bet against Gary Patterson. I go TCU. That makes sense. All right, next one up. Iowa Aaron. State wins the game 24-23. That's, <laughs> if, if for, for what they've done this season, that sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, Arizona at Colorado is Khalil Tate healthy. Uh, the winner of this game moves to five and one. Yes, this Which is, is in my picks. Th- oh, really? Is it? Oh, this game okay. is in my gambling picks. Yes. Uh, how do you feel about this one? Um, I'm going to be interested in it. I watch a lot of this game. It, well, I think Arizona I is like secretly good. decent. I'm not going to say good. There's still a Kevin Sumlin factor. I mean, yeah, he's going to screw up eventually. Yeah, I, I believed in that guy too long. No, you're you're right about that. Dude that. hadn't done crap without Johnny Manziel. Oh, that's a hard. This is a uh, this is going to be an interesting game. Oh no, he did do something else. He had Kyle Allen and Kyler Murray on campus and lost both of them. Yeah, <laughs> both of them starting in the NFL now. Yeah, Baylor at Kansas State. Will Baylor have a letdown over that big or after that big win over uh, Iowa State? Kansas State looking to bounce back after the loss to Oklahoma State last week. I am, I'm so confused on this line. It is Kansas State minus two right now. It opened at, well, I think three, and it's been bet down. But I do not understand Kansas State as a favorite over Baylor, which makes me think that Kansas State is probably going to win this game by like ten. But talent, and I think the coaching, like talent, is is more on Baylor's side. I would agree with that. I think coaching is about even because I like climbing and you know I love Matt Rule. No, 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 you don't. You can't say they're even and put climbing and rule in the same sentence. There's just you just can't do that. Climbing won like six national championships at North Dakota State. Okay. I think he's a fantastic coach. I think he's a really good coach. I, mean, I think he's in year one. That's not disrespect to him in any stretch whatsoever. I think Matt Rule is an absolute elite level coach. You might be right. Um, I, I think do, I do have a play on this. I do too. This this is is I got I got this oh, in my picks. Yeah. This I, I I should be able to notice this by now because when I look at both of you and both of y'all are like, well, we're going I'm rapid fire too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, all right, all right. Uh, Purdue at Penn State. Sindelar and Moore injured. Right so Purdue's whole team is injured. Yeah, Penn State. Um, <laughs> I mean, but, but, but dude, Penn State could they could easily just not give a crap in this game. This exactly. is my game with picks also. All right, Washington at Stanford. Um, does Stanford show any kind of fight? I mean, this line is what like the game's 16, in 15? Palo Alto, right? 
Yeah, but that hadn't seemed to make much of a difference. Uh, no. Like that doesn't matter at all. No. I, look, Washington, much like we talked about Iowa, Iowa State, how it was just a weird game because it yeah. lasted for – Washington, their loss to Cal, to, what, 20 to 19? Also a just weird a game. Weird it got game. delayed for like two, two and a half hours. Yeah. It didn't end up starting until like midnight central time because they started and then they got delayed right away. And it didn't start back until midnight central time. But I think that was Washington's wake up call. It, it, I mean, I again, if I had to make a pick, I'd pick Washington. Yeah, I think Stanford, Washington's I, I, still I, I, got, I got rules. I got rule. Do not bet on bad teams. Stanford's a bad team. So if you give me the option of Washington or Stanford, I'm going to roll with Washington. There you go. No. That's, I think I'd probably do that same thing. I think Jacob Eason is on fire right now, and that Stanford secondary is complete crap. Chris Peterson had had a quarterback. Great time this to good. be a former Georgia quarterback. What, this Chris, good in a long time. Chris Peterson. Oh, he hadn't had a quarterback this good in a long time? Yeah, yeah no, you're right. This is uh, heads and shoulders better than Jake Browning was. Agreed. That's going to wrap up the college football preview show. As always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit us up on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Share the show out. Tell your friends about it. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a review, a nice one, please, for the love of the Lord. Good gracious. Uh, go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi has got some outstanding stuff in the works down there. They've got six sports books that are already absolute fire. Go check them out. Tunica, Mississippi, tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.